Okay, hi, it's Mr. Skinner. I'm going to talk to you about using the table router. Uh, you'll notice that I've got my PPE on, so I've got some goggles on. I've also got my workshop coat on. You would have to wear an apron. It is quite a noisy process, so some people may choose to wear ear defenders. Okay. And we need to make sure that we have the equipment kind of set up with plenty of space around us, so we've got kind of arm's length away from anybody else that might be in the room um, and then we'll be good to go okay the the router is a process where we will remove material away and we usually use a router for materials such as manufactured boards like plywood or soft wood such as pine or hardwood such as oak or beech and it's a method of making a, a step shape cut in the material um, to enable you to glue two pieces of material together at a right angle. Okay, so hopefully you'll be able to see that. You'll notice here, I've already marked out where I'm going to remove my material and I've shaded that in with a cross hatch just because I want to make sure I remove the correct amount of material. Um, the tools that I've used for that have been a pencil, a steel rule, Tri square and a marking gauge. I will do a separate video that shows how to mark up your joints for using the router. Okay, the principle behind the router is we've got the actual router that sits underneath, so you might be able to see that burgundy colored uh, component that spins a cutting tool very, 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 very fast something like 15,000 RPM. 15, revolutions or turns per minute and this here is our cutter okay now i've made sure that the machine is isolated i will keep my fingers away from this area there's usually a little red disc in here red means danger we need to keep our fingers away okay so the cutter is going to spin very very quickly and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our piece of material and we're going to slide it over the top of the cutter and that will cause a cut on the underside okay that's the routing operation i've already set the router up so my cut depth is going to go halfway through our material we would normally get a technician to set this up for us but as a rule of thumb whatever the diameter of the cutter is we need to go half that in terms of the depth so if the diameter of our cutter is 10 millimeters our maximum cut depth in one pass, a single slide over the cutter, would be half of that 10 millimetres, which would be 5 millimetres. Okay, now I've already measured the material that I'm using. This is a 9 millimetre thick ply, and I've set the cutter so it's going to remove 4.5 millimetres worth of material. And I know I'm going to be okay because the cutter that we have set up in the router is a 10 millimetre diameter. So I'm less than half the diameter in terms of my cut depth. Okay, does that make sense? The next thing we need to do is we are going to just do a little practice run. So I'm gonna make sure that the cutter is gonna remove the correct piece of material. And I'm gonna make sure that we're clear all the way around. We sometimes maybe need to use a guide here that enables us to slide our workpiece and keep it flat against the backboard, which means that our cut is going to run parallel to the edge of our material. So we're going to slide that all the way across over the cutter and into our safe area. Okay, so I've already mentioned that the cutting tool is here. We need to consider definitely around here is dangerous, okay, but to be extra safe, we're going to make sure that from here to here is also our danger area. So we need to make sure that nobody else is around, nobody else can get their fingers anywhere near our workpiece. We're not gonna get distracted, okay? We also need to connect up the extraction. Now for, for the purposes of this demonstration, I've actually removed the extraction. So hopefully you'll be able to see the waste material coming out the back and you can understand why it's really important to extract the dust. Now for that, we would use a vacuum cleaner. And um, if we were to use extraction, I will be wearing a face mask as well, but I've just removed it for clarity so you can hear what I'm talking about. Okay, we've plugged in and we've got our start green button and the emergency stop button, our red button, 
And this is also kind of a locking emergency stop on here, so we can actually release that to make our machine switch on. And that's a very noisy process, as I said before. So when we switch on, fingers completely out of the way until that cutter there has stopped spinning. So I'm going to talk you through what I'm going to do again. I've marked out my material. I'm going to place it onto the backboard and then I'm going to slide it over the cutting blade and I'm going to use my left hand to make sure that my workpiece doesn't lift up and get kicked out of the machine. Okay, so I'm sliding with my right and I'm putting downward pressure on with my left hand. Okay, and I'm going to go all the way over. So I'm going to do that now. Um, and then I'll be able to show you what that actually looks like when we're done. So I'm going to switch on and I'll do the process. Machine. We've got the emergency stop lock, so that cannot be switched back on again. And what you should be able to see here is we've made a step cut, so the actual shape of the wood has changed to enable us to then slot that together. So the next stage of our operation will be to make sure that we have removed all of these wood fibres, so we possibly use some glass paper to be able to do that. Uh, we would put some PVA glue in here, and then we would clamp up our workpiece. If we were making a, a square container, we would need to router in each corner to enable it to slot together, which is why the marking out is really, really important so you can guarantee that you get your cuts in the correct places. Okay, so this is the table routing process. You can see how the material that we've removed has been turned into sawdust. If we'd have had the extraction connected onto here, the vacuum cleaner, that would have removed that dust. Um, and you'll have heard the noise as well, which is where we might need to consider kind of some form of hearing protection as well. So it's a timbers process. We've got to keep our fingers well away from the cutting blade. OK, we've got to assume that this is our danger area. OK, we're going to have our hands getting quite close to the blade. We've got to make sure that we never touch this when the machine is on. 15,000 revolutions per minute basically means that cutting tool would cut you. 15,000 times if you held your finger over that for a minute. So that means you can get a very serious injury very, very quickly from it. Okay, so um, that's it. See you later.